Hi, I'm Dr. AJ Kumar, PhD. We're reading section 2.6 of Artin, and it looks like it's just over a page, so this should be a very short video. Uh, there will be a link to buy the book down in the description. Please go buy the book. So, of course, first thing we're doing is going through and highlighting all of the terms. Um, okay, we have isomorphism. Piece of shit software can't handle my We were at like sixty. Page sixty. So it's page fifty five in the book. Okay, and let's try, okay, now it works the way, I don't know, it's some bug in the software. Okay, and then let's switch to this. Okay, let's go through and highlight all the reserved vocabulary terms. Isomorphism, let's make it bigger. Just scanning for italicized. Okay, here we have isomorphic. I know what this means. Automorphism. Conjugation by G. Conjugate of so there's conjugate in two senses here. Commutator. Okay, now let's go look for prior references and mark those in blue and then, so we're doing like an end pass compilation. Okay. Looking for prior references, 157, 259, 259. This is a forward reference. Here's another forward reference. So forward references, we're gonna put those in glowy green, because that's a that's that's a joggerlicious thing to do is forward references. That's that's the type of thing you'd only see in a C program. Okay. Two six two, that's on the previous page. I'm not gonna. Okay. So let's go and mark where 157. One five seven. This is on page twenty six. And this is the equation. I'm just going to write down the equation. P is equal to sum over I EPI times the comma I. Two five nine.
this is the thing about uh, homomorph uh, kernel trivial precisely when group homomorphism is injective. Okay. Okay, and then the forward references two eleven five. It's going glowy green. This is about isomorphism classes of groups of order four. Remember I talked about quotienting and you talk about equivalence classes with respect to some relation, equivalence relation. Groups of order four, seven, eight, one. Let's go look at that. This is seven eight is groups of order twelve. Seven eight one five isomorphism classes. Of groups of order twelve. Okay. All right, let's let's read. Okay, an isomorphism phi from G, prime, G to G prime is a bijective group homomorphism, right, is a bijective map, so a one-to-one -one mapping, which is different from a mapping that is one-to-one -one because the glowies dominate math, such that phi of AB is equal to phi of A phi of B for all AB and G. The exponential map E to X is an isomorphism when it is viewed from an as a map from the additive group R plus to its image, the multiplicative group of positive real numbers. All right. That's correct. That's correct. If A is an element of infinite order in a group G, the map sending N to AN is an isomorphism from the additive group C plus to the infinite. Cyclic subgroup, yes, okay, correct. The set P of N by N permutation matrices is a subgroup of GLN and the map Sn to P that sends a permutation to its associated matrix. Okay, we know what the permutation matrices are. Is an isomorphism? Okay, sure. Corollary 259. This is abstract algebra 26, by the way. So this is a... Yeah, so this is a kernel is trivial if and only if it is a um, group homomorphism that is injective. So it... Gahaming... This means uh, injective group homomorphism. To do so, we check that the kernel of the homomorphism is 1, which implies that phi is injective, and also that the image of phi is g prime. We check that this and and also that this. That's the grouping. Love English grammar. Isn't English grammar great? If phi from g to g prime is an isomorphism, the inverse image is all okay. Proof. The inverse of a bijective map is bijective. Yes, that's the definition of bijective. We must show that for all x and y in G prime, phi inverse, okay. Yeah, that's it. So, so the inverse map is an isomorphism. So we're, we're showing that it's bijective. That's, that's, death in, that's inherited from the definition of a function. We're also showing, so an isomorphism is a bijective homomorphism, and this is the definition of homomorphism. And so we also have to show that it's homomorph that it's a homomorphism. A is phi of and phi inverse of x, b is phi inverse of y, and c is phi inverse of x, y. What has to be shown is that a, b is equal to c, and since phi is bijective, it suffices to show that phi 
of AB is equal to C. Correct. Okay, since phi is a homomorphism, phi of AB is phi of A times phi of B. which is x times y because phi, yeah, so this is phi of phi inverse of x times phi of phi inverse of y. Well, by definition, this is x times y And then phi of phi inverse of c is phi, which, which is no phi of c is because c is phi inverse of x y. This is phi of phi inverse of x, y, which is x, y. And our goal was to show that phi of a, b is equal to phi of c. Okay, the, the, this seems like it makes sense, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a, a, a little tilde next to it because I'm not 100% convinced, I'm 95% convinced. This lemma shows that when g to g prime is an isomorphism, we can make a computation in either group and use phi or phi inverse to carry it over to the other, right? So for computation with the group law, the true groups have to have identical properties, or have identical properties. To picture this conclusion intuitively, suppose that the elements of one of the groups are put into unlabeled boxes, and that we have an oracle that tells us when presented with two boxes, which box contains their product. What? We will have no way... This is a fucking stupid analogy. I'm sure it would make more sense if I... It was different, but... Two groups, G and G prime, are said to be isomorphic. Right, if there exists an isomorphism between them. Go see AA21. We sometimes, I'm going to, no, AA21, Abstract Algebra 21. Go find the link yourself. You're an adult. Okay? Look up Abstract Algebra 21 on Rumble. And it should be the first, it should be one of the, look up Abstract Algebra 21. Okay, and then maybe add Kumar if you need extra help. But that should be it. Two groups are isomorphic if there's an isomorphism between them. We sometimes indicate with the approximate equal symbol. I see more often the symbol or the symbol, I see those two symbols more often. But approximate equals, okay. Since isomorphic groups have identical properties, so this is what I mean, is that from the perspective of group theory, group theory cannot tell the difference between two groups that are isomorphic. Right? You cannot tell the difference between, using the tools of group theory, there is no way to tell the difference between two groups that are isomorphic. So that's what it, any, the difference between any two fields of mathematics, 90% of the difference is their definition of equals. Okay, so group theory cannot tell the difference between two groups that are isomorphic. Since isomorphic groups have identical properties, it is often convenient to identify them with each other when speaking informally. For instance, we often blur the distinction between the symmetric group Sn and the isomorphic group P of permutation matrices. The groups isomorphic to a given group G are isomorphic. 
or form what are called the isomorphism class. I missed this term. The ice, isomorphism class of G. Okay. Yes, this is what I was talking about, equivalence classes. So equivalence class. Go look at AA21. Okay. Any two groups of an isomorphism class are isomorphic. When one speaks of classifying groups, what is meant is to describe these isomorphism classes. Exactly, exactly what I was saying earlier. This is too hard to do for all groups, but we will see that every group of prime order P is cyclic. So all groups of order P are isomorphic for a fixed P. There are two isomorphism classes of groups of order 4, and five groups of isomorphism and classes of order 12. Yeah, okay. An interesting and sometimes confusing point about isomorphisms is that there exist isomorphisms from G to G from a group G to itself. This is important. This is the whole heart of Galois theory, is automorphism groups. So, Galois theory. which is, I think, chapter 16. Such an isomorphism is called an automorphism. The identity map is an automorphism, of course, but there are nearly always others. The most important type of isomorphism is conjugation, or of automorphism is conjugation. Let G be a fixed element of a group G. Conjugation is a map phi from G to itself, defined by phi of x is equal to phi, equal, maybe phi sub G. G of x is gx, g inverse. This is an automorphism because, first of all, it is a homomorphism. Yes, okay. Yeah, because you can insert the identity. This is an important technique that comes up a lot in math. Insert the identity. Insert the identity. And second is bijective, because it has an inverse function, conjugation by G inverse. All right. If the group is abelian, conjugation by any element G is the identity map. Yes. But any non-commutative group has non-trivial conjugation, so it has automorphisms different from the identity. For instance, in the symmetric group, S3 presented as usual, conjugation by Y interchanges I'm not going to look that up, but sure. Interchanges x and x squared. So I remember that, so if we do x, y, x, so maybe a better way is that y, x, y inverse. Yeah, this goes to, because y, x goes to x, squared y, y inverse, which is x squared. And then y, x squared, y inverse goes to x squared, y, x, y inverse, which goes to x to the fourth, y, x inverse, which is the same as x. Oh, oops. y inverse, which is the same as x. Because x to the fourth is equal to x, and y, y inverse is 0, or 1. As we said before, the, con the element gx, g inverse is the conjugate of x by g, and the two elements and two elements of x and x prime of a group g are conjugate of x prime is equal to gx g inverse for some g and g. The conjugate gx g inverse behaves much in the same way as the element x itself. For example, it has the same order in the group. This follows from this fact that it is the image of x by an automorphism. See the discussion following lemma 2.6.2. Okay. 
let's think about this. Yeah, so let's say that x to the n is equal to 1 and n is the smallest such number such that this is true. Okay, then g x g inverse to the n, well, this is because of the logic, which is that the, if you, which is, you know, this is going to be g x g inverse, g x g inverse, blah, blah, blah. These middle terms are going to cancel out. So this is going to equal g x to the n g inverse, which of course, because x to the n is equal to 1, is the smallest such number, which is the definition of n being the order of x, g g inverse, which is going to be equal to 1. So n is the smallest such number for... Okay, I can see how that the order of g x g inverse is bounded above by n. So I'm going to look into Dummett and foot. Dummett and foot, because that, that book I think is a little bit more verbose. Okay. No. One may sometimes wish to determine whether or not two elements x and y of a group g are conjugate, i.e. whether or not there is an element g and g such that y is equal to gxg inverse. It is almost always simpler to rewrite the equation to be solved as for g as yg is equal to gx. The commutator, this, isn't, this note seems important. What is important? M as in mauve, which is purple. Is, do we have purple? Okay. This seems important. Mauve as in important. It is almost always simpler. The commutator is another element associated. Yeah, okay. This is important. The commutator, let me mark important with the star. This is important. The commutator, let me save. The commutator is another element associated to a pair a, B of elements A in the group. The next lemma follows by moving things from one side of an equation to another. Two elements A and B of a group commute. A, B equals A, B, A, if and only if A, B, A inverse is equal to B, and this is true, if and only if A, B, A inverse, B inverse is equal to 1, and this is super important. Okay, so by this logic, if for every A and B you define a, B, A inverse, B inverse equals 1, then the group is commutative. Okay, so let me, this is the end of this section, but let me, okay. So here, here is a common construction. This is how you take any group. This is a group, arbitrary group G, and we want to make it commutative. So what we do is we define the commutator of G, which we'll call C, which is the set of all A, B, A inverse, B inverse, such that A and B are elements of G. Okay. And my claim is that G mod C is commutative. which is equal to abelian. Okay, first let's prove that C is a normal subgroup. Okay, so what this means is that how do we prove that C is a normal subgroup? So what we want to prove is that G, A, B, 
A inverse B inverse G inverse is in C. How do we prove that? Okay. So let, let let's say that A B Okay. This is saying that G A B A inverse G B inverse is in C. So I want to move, I want to get I don't know. This doesn't matter. This matters, but it doesn't matter for the point I'm making. My point is that G mod C is commutative. Okay. Oh man, I don't remember how to prove this. But anyway, this is, this is how you make a group commutative. You take all such words like this. And I don't remember how to prove this. I'm sorry. I don't remember how to prove this. But anyway, you take G mod C, and that's the uh, abelianization. Let me make this a different color. Abelianization. Of G. That's what that is. Groups. That, that's the idea. And I, I, I don't remember how to prove, I don't remember how to do the logic, I'm sorry. We're going to look at, I, mean, I want to look at Dummett and Foot, Because Dummett and Foot I think is a little bit more verbose, and Arden is a little bit more uh, mysterious, and I don't want mysterious when I'm trying to learn. I do like it when Rudin does it, because Rudin does it right, but Arden is a retard. I don't want to say he's a retard, because he's obviously a genius. But he's not as good at, he doesn't, he, he's trying to be Rudin, and he's not Rudin. Sorry, you're not Rudin. You don't, you don't. Anyway, um, that's all I have to say. Thank you for watching. Have a nice night. How long have I been going? 28 minutes. Thank you for watching. Good night.